front car looks smart, smart but in a spare tire yet on both of them. No thanks. I'll stay with my 18 wheeler. You guys here can do your weird thing. Here we are getting into Junction, Texas. Exit 156. Surprising how many little truck stops there are around here. There's off on the south side of the interstate. You've got a new pilot. Anyways, on the north side of the 10, there is also on the. <laughs> he's got a little toy dump truck on his flatbed. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Here on the left side, the west side of the 83, there's also some other. There's a Chevron and another truck stop that's a little farther back. They have a little parking, and it's not really a truck stop. I mean, they got a little store, and you can put fuel in. That's about it, though. Here we are, Cooper's Barbecue. Gene's truck stop there. Like I said, there's about a thousand little truck stops here. And then uh, Cooper's actually has a couple of little spots you can pull into as well. Let's see if I can do that. I think they had a, last time I remember they had a big hole their yard. That wasn't fun. Oh, it looks like they seem to have patched up their little parking area here pretty good. Well, it's time for me to have some real good barbecue. All right. So here's another, I won't say example, but the truck in front of me, the blue one there, is a Freightliner. Wait, they're both blue. The one to the left is a Freightliner FLD 120. It's It's got a chrome bumper, so that's aftermarket. And it's fairly well taken care of. I have the utmost respect for those FLDs. It's probably because I'm just biased, uh, as my dad drove one for quite a few years. But uh, other than that, they have, if you ask me, a couple of attractive traits. Those being, you can see, it's supposed to be an uh, aerodynamic truck, but it still has a very, very much straight nose as compared to that Cascadia there on the right. The nose doesn't drop much as it goes farther forward. It does have a setback axle, like the Cascadia, so you can still make nice and tight turns. And it still is awful square compared to a modern aerodynamic truck. Which, if you ask me, that's the best, the best mixture of styling and uh, utility, um, utility, as in you can t still turn on a dime, but you still have, it's not the longest nose, but it's not a super short nose either. It is still fairly square and it has a little, um, According to Pittsburgh Power, at least, they're saying it's a very aerodynamic truck. Um, that's great, but that doesn't interest me that much. But that's just something I had floating around in my head that I wanted to say. Let's get on down the road then, shall we? Well, we're getting closer to San Antonio. Actually, pretty close. Not too far away now. Speed limit's starting to drop. But you can totally see a uh, difference in scenery. I should have done this a little ways back. Whoops. Where it was still, you know, out of town. But, uh, but yeah, and I can see uh, the scenery at least out of town was a lot more like, uh, like it was a while back. Only with more, uh, more greenery. So we're at the Eastbound and down. Okay, welcome to San Antonio. Not a good sign. 
But then what did I expect? It's 5.42 in the afternoon. Rush hour in the big city. But it hasn't been too bad just yet. What's that? Turn that other radio off. I don't need that radio. Yeah, I got a separate two-way radio in this truck. And it actually, when you go to the big cities, and you start picking up police bands, it's interfering. So I like to turn that sucker off when we're in the city. I'm hanging out behind this reefer. There's strength in numbers, you know? Welcome to downtown San Antonio. Uh, and the congestion that comes with it at rush hour. so far and that's finding parking at night. So far it looks like I'm just gonna be out of luck. There's a bobtail. 
At least he pulls forward, not as to not give people false hope. Like, oh, maybe here's a spot. Oh, no, it's just a bobtail tuck way back in there. Lovely. That's a handicapped spot. Dang it. What's that? Another short truck. I think these people need to expand. <laughs> At least a little bit, if not quite a lot. Still nothing. Yep, this truck go. Oh, I bet you they're just straight up booked. So I was afraid of. We'll have to go a few miles back down the road. There was plenty of parking there. The question is, will I be able to shower? of this earth that is dirtier than that one over in St. Lawrence. I mean, oh, let's not think about that. This one was actually pretty decent. But now I'm clean. Got all my paperwork filled out. How many miles have we put down? We put down... Uh, 621 miles. Yeah, that's a pretty nice freight letter. All stacks and all. All right, well, I wanted to, like I did on my last uh, long distance trip log, I wanted to pull a alley night and upload it the very next day, but I can't because I'm in the middle of nowhere. Well, no, I'm not in the middle of nowhere, but I don't have a computer here, I can't edit anything. So hopefully I have stuff I need to do. I need to work on the old white. It's got a bad power steering fluid leak. So I need to try and track that down and hopefully fix it this weekend. Tomorrow's going to be Friday. So I want to try and start on that on Friday. 
so I may not have time to edit together on Friday, but hopefully I think I should be able to get it done on Saturday, and you'll get it Sunday morning, but we'll see how it all goes. Maybe sooner, maybe later. And I'm trying something new with uh, this time around. I've just left my dash cam on all day long. My dad told me about a certain dash cam. Apparently you, you could record 24 hours on it, and as another hour would always be recorded, it would delete the oldest hour, and it would go along like that. So it'd always have the last 24 hours in there. So we'll see how, if my dash cam does the same thing or not. All right, well, hope everybody has enjoyed. God bless, and until next time, have a good one.